All right, I measured down seven inches. Well, it's almost eight inches and I still have concrete. That's why this is so hard. The footing is right here, which is approximately four inches, but the concrete isn't flush with it. It's down below it. Usually it sits on the edge of that. And then over here, we're down about eight inches and this is solid. This is gonna be tough. And look at the water coming in. And what we got, as you can see right here, is this does have mesh in it. The mesh is down about six inches, so I don't know if they had extra spoil they wanted to get rid of, dump the concrete in here, or they were thinking they're gonna park in here. And uh, they wanted a six inch plus floor, but uh, four should have been plenty. So I'm gonna have to keep jackhammering down through this, uh, whatever that is. I hope it's not a ledge. The water's filled in so I can't see it. Um, but it's, you can see over here, this is still concrete all the way down. All the way to there. See that? Here's the height of the shovel. And we're below the floor. The shovel's about 10 inches.
threw a submersible pump in there a flush mount and uh, I got to get the water out of there to uh, see what the rock is and see how thick this concrete is see that for a basement floor see the footing is over there but here look how thick that is I don't know the reason for that and it's pumping it down all right it's filling up pretty quick here groundwater's high but what I wanted to see is what was I hitting with that jackhammer so here's a shovel there's a little bit of soil beneath the concrete and that's apparently a rock I'm going to see if I can bust through it. I broke off a one inch bit over here. Let's see. Snap this baby right off. That goes like so this way. Broke that thing right off. So I ordered more. Here it is. We're gonna put this in there and that should break down through that rock all right so they do a little maintenance on it I'm gonna switch bits check the oil I might have to put a little oil in it and uh, get hammering on it and this pump helps a little bit but it's plugging up a little look at that concrete it's still way down in there I don't know what the heck they did here. This is a footing, and it should be at least 12 inches wide and go down about 12 inches. But it looks like they over dug. I'm gonna plug this thing. It looks like they over dug, and then they left their form board high, and then all the spoil went underneath it, and it's way out to here. And that's about 16 inches from the foundation wall and it just rolls out so it's not like it was designed that way I think they just uh, you know we're in a hurry on the footing just let the extra flow out I've got concrete out to here I've got let's see if you can see it mesh there and I've had concrete all the way out to here and I am down, I gotta get the tape measure, but it looks like I'm down about 16 inches anyway, and I still have concrete. And I need to make that basin fit down in there. And the basin's about 20 inches high, I think. I gotta measure it, maybe it's 24. And I wanna go down lower than that and put gravel under it. And uh, look at this process. Fill right up the water. I've seen some foolish things before like somebody did a sump pump designed for this and then forget it we're not going to do it and fill it in with concrete um, but if you can see the sidewall that's concrete way over there and that's 24 inches from this wall this is concrete way down in there and way down in here never seen anything like it maybe concrete was on sale that day that's a lot of work guys I got a lot of hours in this I'm not even down yet Usually the, uh, the standard dig is only, you know, sometimes a couple hours to get through the concrete with these kind of tools. And then, uh, you know, half an hour digging after that. But that's all stone still. And see this? This is what I'm pulling out of there in the center of the hole. Concrete. See a lot of stone in it. Ah, tough job. I always get them. I'm going to get a tape measure and see what we got. Well, we're down about 16 inches. I got to go down. Uh, the basin is 22 inches deep, 18 inch diameter. And I need a couple inches around. So that's good so far. And uh, just got to keep going. Hey, okay, I'm down two foot. I set the bin in there and it's level. So the water keeps coming in. So I'm going to have to work kind of quick here. I'm going to set the bin in. I'll probably drill the holes in the side after it's in. And then kind of want the water coming in right away. 
I want to backfill with stone. I got buckets of two inch stone. It's a similar to that over there. I'm going to dump it around there some smalls and uh, we'll keep on moving. I might put weight in the bottom of this, keep it down. I would like it flush or a whisker below the surface so that we can squeegee water into it or the natural water coming through the wall can go in and just kind of drizzle into it. All right, I'm got my sump pump or my basin, sump pump basin down in there. I put my lid on it with a plastic on it still so I don't get debris in it. Now I'm packing gravel all the way around it. I checked it for level and I want to tamp it down in there and get it nice and tight. And then we're going to mix up some uh, mortar, finish off the top of it. And it's tough getting stone this time of year. I did find some at home we got. I had to shovel the snow off it. Of course, it's wet, so it's a little frozen right now. And this should pack in nice. We'll work it down around the edges good. And get it to settle. And this will also help filter the debris out. Then I gotta get this 1500 pounds of debris out of here. There's uh, it's like a little clay mixed in with that, but a lot of concrete. I think what they did is they had a lot of spillage beneath the form board on the footing. And that's what I had to get in because I could see the footing go down right super straight. And then at the bottom of it, it just goes way over. It's like, what the heck? And it's not smooth, it's just a, a lump like it's spoiled, you know? So, that's why it took so long. The second day, so I'll just keep working this around, get it cleaned up. I brought some mortar we'll mix up. And I probably won't do the plumbing today. I'll wait till tomorrow. I'll get that concrete all set up so we don't mess with things. All right. We got the basin in level. Gravel packed around it. I got a few holes drilled in it so it doesn't make the, you know, the basin float. Water has came into it. I also put a bucket of rock down in there and a submersible pump when I'm ready to pump it. But I don't want that to float to the surface. And then I'm going to mix up some uh, mortar, fill this all in nice, start getting this cleaned up. But for tonight, today, I want to get all this finished up so it can dry overnight. And then what we'll do is we'll assemble our pump and plumbing, come up the wall, come over and out the window like he wanted. And then we've got... 1500 pounds of dirt to move and then hose and squeegee this floor down get this all cleaned up I'm going to start getting the jackhammer out get all these tools out of here get out my concrete and pan and get mixing all right I'm going to mix up some mortar I got the stone packed all the way around and you see the basin's filling right up with water that's uh, 20 inches deep so we got over a foot of water in there now. So let's mix this mud up. 
I might mix too much, I usually do. It. But I had a bag that was open and it's gonna just get hard anyway. I'm gonna mix it a little bit thick. Just spread it around with a trowel, throw it in there with a shovel. And get this to set up tonight. Probably will in a couple of hours. And I wet my stones down already so it doesn't draw the moisture out of it. I do want to kind of smooth out the top so that we can just squeegee any groundwater right onto the lid and let it go right into the basin if he gets water on the floor. But I don't know if he's going to now because this foundation was sealed. But, uh, if the water's coming up through, we should be able to get the groundwater out, which shouldn't let any groundwater in. So we'll see what happens. Right? I'll know because you're coming up on spring. You'll let me know if it's getting wet in here or not. Someone's watching a movie upstairs, you can hear it. Sounds like animals. I don't know. Nice consistency. It's about like peanut butter would be nice. Now that water's coming up in there, there's enough moisture, it's going to wet this anyway. I think I'll finish that up with a trowel. And we'll get spreading this around now. Make sure the edges are mixed in now. Like we're good here, so I'm just gonna work it around the edges. I'll put this on time lapse. There's no reason to watch that. All right, I just spread my mortar around. I'm gonna let that dry out. Maybe slake is a word. Dry out a little bit and then I'll get my little brush and give it a nice little finish around there. Make sure it's flush with the floor or a slight dip so that we can just squeegee the water right into it. This top has slits and holes in it that we can pop out and any excess water can get down in there but you don't fall into the basin. So doing good. I might get started on loading up all this gravel be nice to have a helper today. I brought over a small wheelbarrow, but could use a tractor bucket, about two scoops here, and uh, get rid of it, be nice. But uh, that basin filled up with uh, water pretty good. Hope it doesn't bubble over the top, but the weight of the water should hold the basin down, and the mortar should help seal the sides up nice. And in the morning, I'll go and take out um, the bucket of gravel I left in there and pump the water out and just make sure the water is coming right back in pretty fast and the basin doesn't move. We'll assemble our new pump and should be able to finish this up tomorrow if I get this gravel out of here. But get the pump working tomorrow would be nice. Good morning, everyone. Happy St. 
Valentine's Day. I'm going to try to make it a short day today. I probably won't be moving that gravel. I might wait a day or two and come back. Um, what I want to do is get this pump working today. So, what we need to do is we'll remove this cover here. See how it looks. The water's pretty clean in there. See my gravel down in that bucket. You gotta remove that, pump that water out. And you see how this cover is a little bit recessed. I wanted to be able to squeegee water over to it. And this cover, see it has a big slot in it. And it's got bolts so I can bolt it on because I don't want a person falling in that. But we're gonna bring our pump and assemble it. Put our check valve. We're gonna run our hose. We're gonna use the flexible hose. I don't know if it's any good, but we'll try that. Flex it back against the wall. Put a clamp. Maybe go on a diagonal, because it's shorter. Put another clamp. Probably another clamp up there going out, out through that window. We gotta take that window pane out. And I cut a piece of, where is it here? Luan. That's pretty good stuff. This is three ply, where is it here? Three ply Luan. And uh, we're gonna cut a hole in it to run this sump pipe. That's a discharge hose. This is a kit. And I brought in some hole saws, a drill. I've got my Bosch Extreme. I brought a bit kit so we can put anchors or tap cons, but I also brought in my ram set and I brought in, I don't know if I got threes, one and a halves, but I might try this, might be quicker if it works and put our clamps on. So let's get started. So first thing, what we're going to do is we'll go ahead and pull this window out and this is a steel frame and it's got well, there's some missing clips but it's got clips on it that hold this pane in so let's see if we can get this hooked up and get the glass out of there the clip of stainless steel slides off Almost do it by hand, I guess. But there's one missing here. And this one almost does it by hand. And what I'm going to do is I'll save this piece of glass. I can get it out of here. It's got our lock in the way. Let's see if this works. Yep, that's cool. I don't want the window coming in, just the glass here. Alright, I might get gloves on, but I've got to take and tip the glass up and out. And I don't want the whole frame to come in, do I? Sometimes you do that and things break, because it hasn't been open in 20 years, you know. And it looks like it'll sit there. Oh, maybe I use a clip to get it. It's got to come up in the air about a half an inch to get up out of this outside frame. Uh, don't break in my fingers, right? Hmm. Well, there, almost. We're going to save this glass frame and I'll put it over behind the fuel tank so nobody will break it. I measured this the other day and it's a 12 by 15. This is thicker than the glass of course. This is almost a quarter, probably five millimeter. But let's see if this fits in. And if it does, I think I'm going to want my pipe at the lower corner. But because it sits down in, I don't want it to start right away. It's probably got to be about a 
half three quarters inch up and then over about an inch. Let's see if we can get that in there. Check that out. And then I brought I brought some uh, caulking, so I caulk around the edge, even though I can feel air around the rest of this. So what I can do is I got a pencil. I know I got to commit about an inch. So I think if we're up about this high, we stay over about an inch. That's where we got to cut our pipe. So it'll look something like that. Because I don't want it up in the air to have the pipe jiggle and rip on the hose. It's going to rest on the frame, the steel frame up there in the window. Okay, the outside diameter of that pipe is inch and a half. And so uh, this kit, I'm going to use a 1 and 5 eighths and we'll go ahead and drill this out right on my mark. does a nice job and then we'll go ahead and see if our pipe fits see that now I can pull the excess out through and then I'll caulk the perimeter if I did it one size smaller it'd been too tight and I don't want it to tear a hose in it or a hole in the hose you know so now we can go ahead and place it up into the window Okay, this is a pump I chose. One third horsepower, 36 gallons a minute. It's got a 23 foot maximum lift with a vertical float switch. I think these are pretty reliable. Um, the basin has to be a 10 inch minimum and we've got an 18 and it's got an inch and a half with a bushing to inch and a quarter that comes with it. And it's rated pretty good. I like these switches. Nothing gets in the way. Sometimes those flip up balls, if somebody grabbed that pipe and moved it over, did, you know, did something in there, and uh, the ball that tips up leans on the side, it's not real accurate, it doesn't turn on. Um, I wish the, the electric wire was longer, but it looks like it just about would reach. I don't know, we'll have to find out. If not, I'll use an extension cord. Um, it's got a double circuit up here. It should be plugged into a GFCI outlet. And normally they're below the box, a separate circuit. Um, what we're gonna do is we've got our hose out through the wall. And then I wanna put a clamp there, maybe a clamp on the board there. I don't know how close, I'll probably use like four clamps or th three or four clamps keep the hose from shaking around um, what we got to do is I bought a check valve and somewhere here I think it's on the check valve there's yeah right here's a little a little hole a little pinhole and what that does is uh, doesn't trap air between the bottom of the check valve and the pump that allows that little bit to drain out. And what happens uh, is it's hard to push air. It'll get air on both sides of the check valve and it won't work proper if you don't have a drain. So that's what I want to do in there. This is an inch and a half. So I need to reduce that. If I put this in and tighten that up, it's going to cover that thread up or that little hole. So I need to use a reducer bushing like that and then thread this in which will be inch and a quarter and that'll leave that open and then I'll get a wrench and tighten these up now that they're tightened up I'm going to take put my clamp on here 
take our hose and put on here. And I'll tighten that up. All right, got the clamp on. I got a four pack, inch and a quarter straps. They're a two hole. So what I like to do, instead of installing them both at the same time, do like the bottom hole against the wall so you can slide your pipe and adjust. But that should see how nice they fit on there. So go ahead and put a strap up here, here. I don't know if I'll come down on an angle. Doesn't matter. There's no sense of going right straight up and then over. Um, I want to keep it away from the electrical, so I want to go this way. If the hose ever burst or anything, it might spray this way. Um, I don't like pipes over top of the panel like up there. And then um, I might try putting them on with the uh, the ram set. Let's see if it works. All right, you see we got 24 feet of line. It just went out aside the window, and I want to get it, you know, a ways away from the foundation. It slopes off quite a bit out there, so the more out there, the better. When he mows lawn or whatever, you can pick it up, move it aside. Um, and maybe on the end of it, I'll put a solid pipe so he can see it, because this will go down in the grass. And then uh, I think it'll be good if we go up on a diagonal and... Um, Maybe at least to this point and then go across horizontal. Um, we'll figure that out. But uh, let's uh, try this ram set. And what it is, you should put a 22 caliber. This is a number four. It's uh, just a shell casing. Put that in there. We're going to use an inch and a half nail. And that goes in here. I'm sure everybody's used one of these before, but. Put your nail in there, put your bullet in there, put your, uh, it's not a bullet, but just a powder actuator. Put that up here, and we're going to try to get in this concrete, which is about 25 years old. Concrete gets harder every year, up to 100 years, something like that. So sometimes on the older houses, you can't get in very far, so that means I'll have to get out the hammer drill and uh, get some tap cons. Let's see what happens here. So I'm going to load my shell in here and see if it's gonna work I've had these sitting around a couple years so I don't know if I get a dud or not now just be careful because she's loaded I got glasses on definitely gotta have glasses um, and like I said what I like to do instead of going ahead and slamming this right on is uh, just do the bottom one first Stay away from the edge so it doesn't chip out. But this will take a lot of pressure off this hose if I bring it up slightly higher. Something like this. Let's see if this will work now. And then turn the opening away from your face. Yeah, it might be a dud. Might be a dud. They're a couple years old. Let's see here. Let's try that again. Yeah, it worked. And then you can eject your shell. Casing out. And it'll drive it right in there. And actually on this one, I might go ahead and put the second one in. That'll take all the tension off this hose. So just go pop that out. Get some more out here. These are number four yellows. Load your nail first. Leave it out just a whisker so you can get into your hole your shell in there close it slowly aim it away from your face this straight going nowhere 
and pull that eject. The smoke comes out. There's a spent one. And then I think I'll come across. Maybe right straight across like here. I could attach right into that wood, but see this is a little floppy. So I might start at the pump and figure out my angle. And then we can slide this through, see? So we're in good shape. I'll probably put it on time lapse. Okay, to see the length of hose, I'm gonna go ahead and pull my bucket out of the water. It's got the stone in it that held the base down so it wouldn't float away yesterday. As you can see, probably by the end of today, it'll be up over the top of this. So what we got outside is a thaw going on. We had a bunch of snow. We had some ice over here, but see, that's coming underneath the slab. So that's kind of good. This should take care of it all. So let me get this out of here. We'll go ahead and set the pump in. And then on this cover, it's got holes in there. I gotta clean that up, but get the holes in there so I can tighten up the lid and have the hose come up through that. And the bolt, bolts are in that plastic there. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and set that pump in there and we'll test it. Even though the line's not secure, it should work fine. I wanna pump this down to see if there's any debris in the bottom. And you get to watch to see how much water will flow right in through the sides of this. So, I think I'll plug it in first. Well, maybe not. I'll just hang on to the cord. And then, I'm probably going to want the float switch toward the rear. The way this cover lines up. This is sturdy plastic. It's a quarter inch thick. Um, there's a hole here. And a bolt there, bolt also a thread, so it'll go in like this. And that way, if you're standing by the panel, you're stepping on a solid rather than that piece. And so I'm gonna want it. Probably like that direction, and of course that's closer to our exit, so that should work fine. It'll be right about here. Pretty deep. Whoa, real deep. All right. Now, watch our water. Let's see how fast you'll clean it out. You do the math. I think it's 20 gallons. And so that's probably got 15 or so in there. And does it reach? It looks like it will. That's good. You ready? I'll bring you over here. See how fast it's taking care of that? Watch the water flowing in here. See, I drilled holes on it. And let's see if our pump switch works fine. See, we're not gonna have this much hose laying in there. That switch will shut off at a couple inches or something, probably. Perfect. I think we're in business, guys. So I'll go ahead and get the cover on. We'll put our hose up here. We'll probably tape our wire to the hose. And then what I like to do is put some kind of connection by the panel so that the cord stays with the panel. They know it needs to be plugged in. Okay, I got four clamps on there. These uh, ram sets work pretty good. I had one blowout, and that's it. And that's where you go in and you hit like a stone or something instead of the concrete and it doesn't hold well. But uh, now what I got to do is I saw the pump was working. You can see the hose jiggle a little bit. I want to caulk around that. I believe everything else here looks good. I got to put my bolts in the cover. I may not tighten them up, but just get them in there so the cover doesn't fall off if somebody steps on it. 
caulk around that hose. I stretch the hose out in the lawn and it runs out about 12 feet, which is great. And then, um, let's see what else we got to do, guys. I want to take over here on the wire, goes into the panel. Oh, is somebody could just yank this out and then it could fall down in there. So I want to secure this somewhere. I was going to twist these together but and put some tape on it. I might still do that. That way it can't fall in there. Maybe I'll put some black tape there and see if I can get a staple put in this so that it hangs here if somebody unplugs it instead of falling down in the water. And then I've got, it looks like, three quarter inch by three quarter inch uh, bolts and washers with the 716 head. I gotta put them in the cover so the cover doesn't move. And this cover is strong enough to stand on. It'll flex a little, but you won't fall in the hole. And looks like we're done with this project, which is good. We gotta get the earth out of here. And we'll call it a wrap. There's about, like I said, I don't remember how many shovelfuls. You saw it. Huge amount of earth here. It's about one of my tractor buckets full. And, but when the tractor bucket is full, I can't lift it. It's, uh, especially because it's wet. And there's some concrete in there. It's probably 12, 1,500 pounds here, I think. But that looks pretty neat. And like I said, it's got the check valve. And that way it won't get air locked. It goes up. I'll caulk around that. Everything's looking good. This finished off nice around here. The other thing I want to do is outside here. I'll use my bulldog. And I'll drill some quarter inch holes. Maybe larger, three eighths holes. This seems to pool up a lot of water right here. And you can see it's about, there's a lot of water here, six inches deep. That's probably where we're going to dump some of that earth. But the water that comes up on this slab, it kind of sits here. And there's a gutter up there that must be plugged because it just runs right over. And it hammers right here. And I don't want it to go under the wall. So I think I'll come out a foot anyways. And then I'll drill some holes. And that's right about at the drip point. And if he can keep this slab clean by, you know, keeping it swept off, I don't see why, you know, the water won't go down through there and get down underneath the foundation. And should take care of our water problem in here. It's looking a lot better than it used to. And I think what I'll do to show you is I'll go ahead and turn this um, water faucet on. And... I'll put it in the sump pump, lock it on, and we'll go out and see how much water is coming out of it, how well this takes care of it. I'll show you how good this works. And we'll lock this on. See, that comes out through the corner of that window. And we got plenty extra line here. I come down through. He's got a lot of junk out here. I don't know what's the deal with this, but not my doings. And I just ran the end of this through a a cement block so that he can tell where the end of it is should turn on here in a second I put the hose right out the uh, from the water pump so it should be seven gallons a minute here it comes that's a lot of water guys so that'll take care of our problem here and it's on a float switch so it'll cycle and be done so I think this is pretty good job to to do here and uh, remember we took this old sunroom off because it was collapsing and I recommended we build another one they said no and I said another thing we could do is come up here and come out with a roof and do a little pavilion and that would get the water way out there and maybe even throw a gutter on it and exit the water out that way where it naturally goes downhill. And uh, he said no, so this is what we're dealing with.
And then we'll watch it when it turns on again, it'll flex. Here it goes, see it? That to me looks like it's safe enough, it's not gonna come unhooked. Four clamps. And I'll go ahead and shut this hose off. And it should be fairly silent. I don't think he'll hear this thing running upstairs. So now we just gotta put our bolts in it and then get our mess cleaned up. And like I said, it's Valentine's Day, so I don't wanna hang out here all day, long day. Maybe I can get Dawson to come up and help me shovel some of this and wheelbarrow it outside after school or something. So, all right, I'm outside here. Got the bulldog and a half inch concrete bit. And I'm taking, drilling a few relief holes because what happens is water comes off this roof, piles up right here. We get about one inch here, three inches over there. So the slab slopes this way. The water won't exit that way. It slopes downhill. Either, probably they dug this out and uh, over dug it and they didn't tamp it or something but this slab is tilted and I would have sloped it that way a half inch or an inch I got something off of here but the gutters drop it down so I'm not going to drill in front of the door but I'll do one over there one over here and I went across there about every three feet and popped a hole and I you can see the bits wet there's water under it so this is definitely going to help to tell him to uh, keep this slab kind of clean so the debris doesn't go down in the hole but it should catch its groundwater here and disappear pretty quick and oh there's a woolly bear we're talking February in the Sun here he's got daffodils coming out on the other side check him out he's alive move him out of the way so we don't squash him and then uh, I think I'll drill one more. I don't want to drill one in front of the door. I don't know why. I just don't want to. And, uh... I think I'll be done with this said project, you know? about four inches thick so I got one two three four five six seven eight holes out here half inch and that should collect any of the surface water and the surface water is pretty clean it comes off the roof you know and snow melt and so that was my idea, allow the water to exit. The last thing we gotta do, the last thing we gotta do is we gotta get all this gravel out, pick up our toys. I brought out a little wheelbarrow. This one's narrow enough I can get through the door without harming it. And he said, go ahead and dump it along here. We'll spread it out, I'll bring a rake back. Might bring the Dawson back because he's got to do a little work out here. And these mothballs that were around in this basement really got to me. And they had several, I think one, two, three, four, five, six, six ducks blowing into the basement. And the homeowner's elderly. And it was about 85 down here with all them mothballs every four inches all the way around this basement. I was getting sick, hurt my throat. And I said, we got to get them out of here. 
So I took a couple days off. He come in here and he cleaned the basement and uh, the sun and got the um, got it cleaned out, aired out here. He told me to leave this door open. And um, I'm going to take and get this gravel out. There's a little bit of clay in there. And get this out of here in a couple days. Probably come back on the weekend, grab it. And then uh, we will take a garden hose, hose it, probably hose it right down into the sump pump and get this floor all cleaned up and we'll be in business so thank you for watching and i don't get the normal jobs you all know that i get the very difficult ones um this is what he did with a gutter over here he uh put a perforated pipe to catch the downspout so how well does that work all the water runs right back down here got to use solid pipe i did have the backhoe here i asked him if you want me to dig and throw one out to daylight and he said no and i'm like okay there's a cheap railing i threw on there they didn't have anything and i don't want him tripping um but stay tuned got more videos coming and happy valentine's day see you later